Um, so, Tavi, today we wanted to um, get on this call to talk about mental health, you know, and the fitness and bodybuilding community especially. I know you've been dealing with a lot of issues in, in your past, right? Um, you went through a depression. Um, you know, can you can you tell the, the people about it a little bit, what you went through in your life? And, you know, right now, especially with the whole quarantine, people are stuck at home. A lot of people don't know how to deal with it necessarily and, and you know... The gyms are closed, you know, so I'm sure it affects people in certain ways. So um, for those who don't know, what, what did you go through in your life and how did it affect you? And most importantly, how you were able to get over it? Yeah. So, I mean, in summary, you know, I was, I was born in Mexico, very poor family, uh, immigrated to Canada. Um, and then I made my way over to Europe as a, as a soccer player. But, uh, you know, I came over by myself when I was 14. So I was away from home. Uh, eventually uh, had issues with my with my paperwork. Uh, I couldn't get uh, my visas and my passports uh, arranged in time, uh, so the clubs couldn't offer me contracts, mm -hmm. things like that. So eventually went on to uh, to university, um, and you know essentially the reason I'm saying that is I really had to take care of myself since I was young. Um, later went on to you know to aerospace engineering, did my degree, and then that's when. Uh, you know, I created body engineers, you know, basically to try to help my uh, income because I had to pay my way through school. Um, and of course, in creating uh, this brand, it was my passion. It was, you know, my my art. Uh, and then about four or five years ago, you know, with the boom of social media and suddenly you're in the spotlight, everybody's watching you. You know, that puts a lot of stress and a lot of tension on your your lifestyle, your relationships, because, you know, now you're. Basically, you know what I want to what I want to get to uh, in this conversation a bit later. You start to really create an identity and an ego in the sense uh, that you start to really identify with. You know, I'm no longer Octavio McGinnis Castro. I'm Tavi Castro, this guy on Instagram, right? Um, and the danger with that is that once you identify with it, you uh, if that gets threatened, that reputation, that identity gets threatened. Uh, the ego makes it feel like like you're gonna die uh, and that leads to uh, situations where you're no longer present in time in the sense that your mind is always being anxious about the future uh, or you're being depressed about things that happened in the past so uh, essentially everything led up to a point where uh, in a very short period of time uh, somebody who I consider like a father figure uh, you know I was in, living in the Netherlands, I was a, a Canadian kid, I didn't understand how to set up a business. I asked uh, for advice on, on how to do it, somebody I trusted like my father, and then ended up, he ended up registering the logos of the company uh, and giving himself uh, a position in the company without my permission, uh, but of course I trusted him blindly so I did, not, uh, you know, I did not think that he would do something like that and I ended up having to go to, to court and win back the rights to my, my logos and things like that, which I did uh, in the end. But that situation combined with, uh, you know, I was uh, engaged and then eventually my, my fiance ran off with my best friend. That hit me very, very hard, obviously. Um, and then in that, you know, kind of depression of losing my fiance, having to fight for my company, losing trust in people, the pressure of social media, um, and then later now, this year, actually, I also discovered that I do suffer from ADHD, uh, which means that I don't sleep properly. I'm very, I can hyper-focus, which is actually a huge superpower, but at the same time, uh, I'm also very chaotic uh, most of the day. So um, everything kind of combined um, just led me to a really bad place. I couldn't trust anybody. I tried to go home to Canada to to be with my my parents to help me out. While I was away, the manager I put in charge of the company uh, stole eighty thousand euros, which I found out shortly after. Uh, and that just, you know, my world was kind of crumbling. I couldn't trust anybody. Finally, I had built something beautiful, and they wanted to take it away from me or you know ruin it. Um, not sleeping properly, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression um, led me to. A where you know, I almost uh, tried to take my own life, and that was a very difficult uh, moment for me. And that was when? Uh, sorry? That was when? That was in 2016. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so 
uh, I was lucky in the sense that uh, I hung on. I, I ended up not sleeping for about three three months straight, uh, and I ended up falling asleep at the wheel um, in 2016 January, uh, and that's when I when I crashed. And I, you know, I was very lucky to to you know be able to survive that. Um, but I also woke up. It was a very interesting moment when that happened because uh, I had this kind of moment of enlightenment where I just didn't care about Tavi Castro anymore. I just basically said, I'm fuck Tavi Castro. I'm, I'm Octavio, you know, uh, and I felt lighter and suddenly I felt, um, good. I felt at peace. Uh, and it was a very interesting moment that did fade away. I did go back to my anxious and, and, you know, mentality and depressed mentality shortly after, but then that gave me kind of a hope that there's some way to get back to that state of mind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's kind of the story of what, know, what, what, um, when you would say you wanted to take your own life and commit suicide, uh, can you describe that feeling when you actually contemplating that, like what goes on your mind? and what kind of process you thinking is happening, you know what I mean? Like to justify something like that. Yeah. So to, I think the best way to describe it is that your mind doesn't allow you to be present in the moment. So your mind is constantly stuck thinking about the future, what could happen next. So you, this causes anxiety. This side, you have your past, which is full of struggles and full of pain and suffering. And, here in the middle, you're just at peace. But when you get into a, you know, a very deep depression uh, or suicidal depression, you're constantly shifting from anxiety to depression, anxiety to depression, anxiety to depression. And you never kind of stop, stop that pendulum. Um, and that pendulum, what can stop it are things that bring you to the present moment. So right here. So for me, that's making music, being in the studio, that's training, uh, going to the gym and now it's meditation so back when you know I was having that that depression and all these things were happening I stopped training I stopped I stopped making music so without even knowing it I was taking away my ability for at least a small fraction of the day to be and to, to really be with myself so, you know essentially when it comes to somebody who's in this pendulum if they lose the ability to stop, and some people, you know, this ability to be in the moment could be jumping out of an airplane. When you jump out of an airplane, you're not thinking about tomorrow, you're not thinking about what happened yesterday, the moment. So everybody kind of has their own form of meditation. For me, it's the gym, for me, it's producing music, uh, and now actual meditation. But if you never discover that feeling of just being yourself without that identity, then that's when you get into trouble. You're obviously an entrepreneur, right? Um, so would you would you say the cause of, of most of your worries in life or, or depression or anxiety comes from thinking about business and the future of your business? Is that, is that a major part of it, you think? Huge part of it, of course. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I'm Octavio. I'm not Tavi Castro. Tavi Castro is just, you know, what the world sees on, on my social media pages. Uh, and, you know, the entrepreneur, the family man, but of course you don't see Octavio, the struggle, the, the things that, uh, that made me who I am. And where it becomes very dangerous is when Octavio believes that Tavi is in fact the same person. So if you take my house, if you take my, my money, my business, my car, or my, my dog even, my girlfriend, in the end you're still yourself. But if you identify with your your your, let's say your fake identity in your mind, and that's really who you think you are, the thought of losing these things, the thought of not being that person could actually push you to think it's over, I should just kill myself. And that's where, and that's where it gets dangerous. Mm, interesting. So, um, so you, you were saying your, um, your key to overcoming the anxiety was basically occupying yourself with those things you mentioned, gym, making music, right? And, and being in being more in a moment, right? That's that was your yeah. kind of like your, your way out of it and to you know to understand your anxiety more and, and to be able to control it. Yeah. Exactly. So you know to try to give 
everyone watching kind of a visual uh, representation of what I mean. You know, I, I mentioned the pendulum. So mm-hmm. when, you know, when I was having my my depression, this was mm-hmm. stop. My day would be constantly thinking about, oh, what's going to happen next? Oh, why did that happen yesterday? Why did they do that? Why did they hurt me? So you 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 could be living as a billionaire, you could have all the materialistic possessions in the world, but you're never happy. You're just never happy because you're just worried about the next thing or, or depressed about the last thing that happened. So, you know, a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of fitness uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs or people in the fitness industry, training, whether they realize it or not, is in fact their form of meditation. So when you go and you train, you know, and you're focusing on your training, you're focusing on your mind-muscle connection, you're here, you're in the now, you're not really thinking about tomorrow, you're not really thinking about yesterday, you're thinking about getting that bar off your chest, otherwise you're going to crush yourself. But when you leave the gym first, like, let's say you're in a gym for an hour or two hours, you know, but then you leave and the problems come back again, right? How are we able to actually keep it under control so it doesn't haunt you when you stop uh, occupy, right. preoccupying yourself with different things? Right, so... You know, if you, if you do a little bit of research into what is meditation, it is in fact turning off your mind. So when somebody's very deep in their depression, their mind has taken control of them instead of them having control of their mind. So even having a short period, even 15 minutes of meditation a day, you know, sitting still, closing your eyes, not thinking, that actually gives your brain a rest and it actually allows you to regain control of your thinking. Right. You become in the moment. And that's where if somebody stops training or is not able to train or in my case, have time to to make music, suddenly you don't have that break in your day. Your day goes from stress, depression, anxiety until you go to sleep and then you probably won't sleep. And the cycle starts again. And as days go by, the cycle continues, but you're also getting more physically tired. And that's what can lead somebody to just being completely ripped apart. 